It's been an exciting month with the Samsung QN90C Neo QLED. And today I'm thrilled to bring you my one month later review. We'll be diving into the performance, features, and overall experience after spending quality time with this fantastic TV. So if you're considering getting this model or simply curious about how it holds up over time, stick around and we will uncover the details of this in-depth review. So let's get started. Well, hey guys, Juan here. Thanks for stopping by my channel and checking out this video. So today we're going to be giving my thoughts on owning this awesome TV here, this Samsung 43 inch TV for one whole month. What it's done for me, how well it's performed and anything that I learned that's been new. Uh, so we're gonna talk about that and uh, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of review with this video. So the way this video is gonna go is I'm going to give you a little bit of a review process of this video and explain some of the details of it, all the apps and uh, some of the specs on it. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about what it's been like to own this for one whole month. So let's go ahead and dive into the review of this video and then we'll talk about owning it after one whole month. Now, uh, now the good thing about this is, I, I mean, I don't work for Samsung, I don't work for Best Buy, I don't work for Amazon, I don't work for any of those companies. I'm an actual consumer who bought this TV and I wanted to give an honest review of what it's been like. These are the kind of videos that I like to watch on YouTube, so I thought I would make one on this TV to maybe help you guys out and maybe you're in the market to buy one. All right, so this TV here, I've got it hanging on my wall here. This is a pallet wall that I built. Uh, but this particular space here is like my office and this TV here is a perfect size TV for this little space that I have. Now this is the 43 inch TV. As you can tell, it fits perfectly on this wall as far as sizing goes on width and the end. Um, then with the sound bar to complement the sound on it because a lot of times these TVs, the sound isn't that great. So sometimes you gotta buy sound bars. Now that's not every TV and you don't have to get a sound bar. Uh, sometimes they do sound good themselves and what I've experienced with Samsung is Samsung is one of the better TVs at having audio uh, built within the TV versus some of these other brands where you almost have to buy a sound bar uh, to supplement the sound. But this TV does well without a sound bar but I had a sound bar already so I just went ahead and added it to this little setup. Now this is the 4K ultra high definition. Now, if you've never really owned a UHD TV before, ultra high definition, you're in for a treat because the images on it look like they're there. I mean, they're like, they're not, they're not like blurry, okay? They're really defined. And so whenever you're watching people on, on the screen, it's like they're right there. So I love living in today's day and age where the clarity of televisions is so much better than what they were just five years ago. Now the great thing about this thing is it is a smart TV so it has all its smart components built in it. You don't need to buy one of those sticks like a fire stick, a Roku stick or anything like that to stick into TV. It's already all built in there in Samsung's smart interface that's on built into a lot of these smart TVs that they're releasing. And I think that's the way of the future anyways. Um, I think the, the sticks are probably going to go away um, and all TVs are probably going to end up going to become smart TVs. So if you're going to buy one, go ahead and just get a smart TV so that way you're future proofing yourself and you're, you're setting yourself up for the future pretty much. Okay so right now I do have Disney Plus on the screen here. This, this has been the channel that my family's been watching for a while now but it does have all the apps on there. So there's a home icon that you hit there and then the Samsung menu pops up in the bottom and shows you all the different apps that you can get. Now, some of these you have to download. Some of them come pre-installed on the TV already. Um, so you would have to set up a Samsung account in order to get these. Everything's free as far as downloading a Samsung account. Um, now, getting these apps, some of them you do have to pay for, obviously, like uh, Netflix as on here. I got Disney Plus Prime Video. So if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get the Prime Video for free. Uh, we got Hulu, Apple TV, which is a great addition because sometimes Apple, Samsung, Apple doesn't play well with other companies, but they are on the Samsung TV. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, I do have the Spectrum app. And now if you are a Spectrum customer, um, it's your cable, your local TV. Um, a little caveat with Spectrum is that they signed a deal where they 
are allowed to be on Samsung TVs. You can download a Spectrum TV app or Roku. Those are the only two that Spectrum works with at this point in time in making this video. And then another app I have on there is the Fandango. And then there's a TV Plus app right there. That's one that's installed in the Samsung TV. They have their own like uh, little TV channel there that has other options on there to watch some free TV. So that maybe if you don't have the money, you don't want to buy some of these apps, you can still watch TV with that. You just have to have an internet connection. It's got YouTube on there, YouTube TV. So in case you're into that and watch, like watching uh, these kind of videos on your TV, you can do that here also. But it's got the ability to download all your major apps for your streaming television. Now, as far as the clarity of this TV, it is awesome. It is that 4K ultra high definition. So the picture is awesome pretty much on any app that you watch it on, whether it be, you know, your Hulu, your Netflix, or your Spectrum TV, you're going to get a good picture on this. So if you're going to buy a TV, invest a little bit of money in it and make sure you're buying good quality TV like this one here. Here's a few more features that this thing has when you go into the settings of this TV. It's got the standard picture mode, or you can change that. It's got four other ones on there that you can choose from. Like it's got, it's got movie mode, it's got dynamic, it's got standard, and it's got natural. There's not a whole lot of difference I, to me, so I just kind of go with the standard. I think it just looks good. I do have an audio out optical, so it's hooked up with an audio cable. That uh, one of those optical cables that goes from your sound bar to a TV. Um, but you can change that in the settings here if you had something else that you wanted to power the speakers with instead of just using the internal speakers that are built into this TV. So it gives you the ability to do that. Closed captioning if you want to watch TV with the words on there, which I actually do sometimes because sometimes my kids get a little bit noisy and I want to be able to hear what they're saying, but if I can't hear it, I'll read it. So I do keep that on every once in a while. Uh, it's got a sleep timer on there. I do have it off, but that's actually a good feature to have in case you're one that maybe likes to fall asleep to the TV and let it turn off after a little bit of time. So that way it saves a little bit of energy, saves you a little bit of electric on your bill. Um, and then you can connect it to your Wi-Fi network here. So, um, and the Wi-Fi antenna that's built into this thing is pretty good. Um, so if you are a good distance from your router, um, it'll pick it up. It's done, it does a really good job now, unless you got these steel concrete walls or something like that. But, um, it, this one is a good distance from my home router and it picks it up just fine. I haven't had any lag or any issues with it. Now here's another little feature that's cool with this TV. So it does have a gallery icon right there. Um, you can go into your Samsung app, upload images, and then you can use those images to be like the background, this screensaver that comes up on your TV if you don't want to have um, the, the default that comes on there. Uh, something that does happen after you you haven't had any activity on the TV in a while, it'll go black, but then there'll be a Samsung image that kind of bounces around um, until it falls asleep. So yeah, there's that. Okay, so now what are my thoughts on owning this thing for a month and putting it to use on an everyday basis? And I gotta tell you, this has been a great little TV. So it is a 43 inch. Um, sometimes it, it may not be the particular big TV that you would put in your main living room. Um, I have it right here in my office space. Maybe you could use it in a bedroom or something, but, uh, or maybe if, depending on the size of your room, a 43 inch may be uh, big enough to use as your daily driver and your main TV. But the great thing about this TV is that it is the UHD TV, so the clarity on it is excellent. Um, watching TV on Netflix, whether it be uh, maybe your Spectrum TV, your regular TV, Netflix, Apple, um, Disney Plus, all those major apps, they stream out in ultra high definition channels. So the clarity that you get on a lot of these shows that you watch is really, really good. Um, now, one of the things that I did learn through this month of owning this is that Apple AirPlay is built directly in to this TV. So a lot of TVs, you have to go out and you have to buy a Apple box to attach on there. So it's another cost and another component that you have to install into your TV in order to mirror your iPhone, your iPad, or your iMac to the TV. Well, this Samsung has it built inside there. So I can mirror my iMac right to it. I can mirror my phone to it. So that's something that wasn't really available 
a few years ago. Um, they would have it available for phones that you could mirror of it, but they wouldn't do it for the competitor or Apple. Overall, after owning this thing for a month, I can't complain. Um, if you buy this TV, I think you we won't be able, or you won't go wrong. I think it's going to be a smart purchase for you. This is. That's my dog breathing in the background there. <laughs> but I think this would be a very good TV for you if you're looking to buy one. Um, and I'm gonna have a link in the description down below of where you can get this exact model here. Well, hopefully this video was helpful to you guys in case you were deciding if this is a TV that you wanna buy. If it was, make sure you throw a thumbs up on this video and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I make tech videos all the time and I'd love to have you back on the next one.